look at this. Every paper in town taking a rap at us. This sort of thing isn't going to do this office any good. We'll get him, I tell you. Yeah, maybe he's blown the town. Oh, that's impossible. A fellow did docked in railroad station and flying field. Covered since the day we made his hideout. He can't even look out of the window without getting picked up. He's still here, all right. Well, haven't you any lead at all? Only that Russell Dame and Gloves Baker. She don't know anything, and he wouldn't break if he did. What are you doing with them? I let them go. Uh, well, they may lead to something better. Well, maybe you have the right idea. But this thing has got to be broke, Logan. Well, you know how I feel. And I'll bring him in. I don't know how or when or where, but I do know this. He killed my partner, Bob Williams. And it's the last thing I ever do. I'll bring him in. Give me one of them papers. Since when did you learn how to read? Well, I can look at the pictures, can I? It's better than looking at that ugly mug of yours. Listen, you punch drunk has been. Don't give me any of your lip. Tie it up. Both of you. Next week, I think I'll go out in blackface just for variety. You better stick to the wig, kid. Oh, Slick, I don't like that picture of you. Makes you look old. Cut the county. What's eating you, kid? You're in the clear. The paper says the cops don't know where you are. That's what's got me worried. When the cops said I don't know where I am, that means I got me spot. I want me to stay put. You never make a slip, do you, kid? I made one when I knocked off that cop. Now it's murder. And the heat never dies when it's a law that gets killed. Well, well what are you going to do? Take it on a lamb. Oh, swell, I'm sick of this junk. Where do you think you're going? Home and get my things. This is solo. I'm traveling light. I'll be with you if the going gets tough, Slick. No dice. On my own, I make it. With a mob, I ain't got a chance. Yeah, maybe you're right. Oh, Slick. Slick, you can't go and leave me, Johnny. I'm doing. You put those arms around me and you slip the noose around my neck. I know, but don't. There's no argument. It's settled. Hey, Slick. The law's on the prowl. dies down, you'll hear from me. Here, split this with him and don't burn it up. It may have to last you a long time. When am I going to see you again? Baby, I wish I knew. Listen, Slick, I don't have to tell you. If you need me, I'll I go with you. I know it, Gloves. Hey, look, you've always been talking about going back to visit your old lady. Here's a spot. Give it the elbow, Gloves. Okay. Well, here goes Slick Raleigh. Hey, Gloves. If you ever catch her looking at another man, cut her throat. Okay. Goodbye, darling. So long, Slick. So long. Oh, he'll come out all right. He always does. I know how you feel. Don't let it get you, kid. Like I always used to say in the ring, if you hang on long enough, the girl will save you.
think I'm not going too far when I claim that our first aim should be to cure, not to punish. I know that I may be severely criticized for the stand I am taking on this social problem. Uh, mind you, gentlemen, I'm not condoning crime in any form, nor am I making excuses for the criminal. There are many different types of criminals, and I insist that there are corresponding explanations for each. There are criminals who become such through necessity or environment, but I'm not concerned with these. Nor am I concerned with that great mass of weaklings who succumb to temptation. Theirs is essentially a moral rather than a pathological problem. But what I am interested in are those totally incorrigible criminals who cannot or will not distinguish between right and wrong because they are often leaders among criminals and could be leaders among men. I believe that in many instances, this type is the victim of organic or functional disorders and may be cured, gentlemen, by brain surgery. I am convinced that the cure of this type of criminal will be made by the scientist rather than by the warden. And now, gentlemen, I wish to report some actual progress in my experimental work. Recently, I performed two very interesting experimental operations. I obtained a dog that was vicious and treacherous. I operated. That dog became tractable and gentle. I went a step further. I operated on a monkey that was violent and unmanageable. That monkey became docile and affectionate. In each case, I found a tumor exercising abnormal pressure on surrounding area of the brain tissues. By removing those tumors, the irritant condition was eliminated and normal functioning restored. But now I have reached an impasse. While I am convinced that this kind of tumor is what causes certain criminal types, the law steps in and says, so far and no farther. It will not turn over to me a committed criminal. And thus, what I've been able to do for the criminal animal, I am not permitted to do for the human criminal. But gentlemen, I believe that the day is not far off when medical science will be able to redeem such criminals and transform them into useful citizens. Well, that'll be all, gentlemen. Excited, Doc. I say to stick up. I just want to have a talk with you. You see, Doc, I heard your lecture this afternoon at the medical school. I didn't get everything you said, but I got a general drift. You said you could make a right guy out of a wrong one if you could only get the chance. Well, you're getting the chance right now. I'm the first guy you operate on. Why, you, uh. Yeah. Slick Raleigh. said the state wouldn't give you a guy to operate on. Well, you got one now, and you couldn't get a better guy than me. That's out of the question. You're wanted by the police. Sure. That's why you're getting a chance to work on me. No, no, that's impossible. I can't risk working on a fugitive from justice. It would be a criminal offense. I guess I was wrong in the way I sized you up. You got up and talked big about a great idea you have, and when you get a chance to prove it, you lose your nerve. <laughs> I was dumb enough to think you'd risk something to save thousands of guys from going wrong. I didn't think you'd let a little danger stand in the way of doing so much good for a lot of people. No, no, I... I can't do it. The law won't allow. Sit down. The law don't need to know. Look, Doc, if you prove what you're after, you'll be the greatest doctor in the world. Or maybe you ain't got any confidence in the idea yourself. Maybe you're just standing up there putting on an act for those guys. I have every confidence in it. I've spent the last ten years at this work. I'm sure of its value. How sure are you? You don't know. Maybe it's just an idea. You work on me and you can prove it. You'll know whether you're right or wrong. 
I've never performed this operation on a human being. What if it proves fatal? I must each to get picked up by the cops anyway. When they get me, it's the chair. What's the difference whether I die on your table or in a hot seat? What do you say, Doc? A man never did anything great unless he was willing to take a chance. And I'm only asking one thing in return. What's that? Plastic surgery. Oh. You do my face over, see? That's all I want. So you can evade the police. That's it. But if the operation's what you say it is, I won't be the kind of a guy the police are after. I won't have to run away from them. I'll be a useful citizen. Look, Doc, you got everything to gain. Give me the same break you'd give a monkey or a dog. It's an amazing example. He doesn't remember a thing that happened before the operation. He may be only pretending to have lost his memory. The sanitarium does offer him perfect shelter from the police. No, no, no. I question him every day since the operation. He remembers absolutely nothing about his past. Isn't that unusual? No, it happens. Sometimes overexposure to the X-ray causes lapse of memory. Besides, it was a very delicate operation. I had him on the table so long, severe shock may have set in. And you must remember, the brain is a very delicate organ. I may have tied off one too many blood vessels. I don't know. He may be clever enough to fool you. Oh, I wish you hadn't got into this. Well, there's one way of settling it. And he's strong enough now, too. I can try the polygraph, the lie detector. Won't he suspect? No, we can do that right here in the house. It will record any disturbance in his breathing, his pulse, or his blood pressure. If he's consciously lying, or if he's under any emotional stress, the needle will show it on the graph. Now, I want you to answer my questions just as carefully as you can. All right, Doctor, but what's this all about? Just a way of testing your blood pressure. Now, we get started. Okay, Doc. What is your name? You told me it was James Blake. Have you ever been at sea? I don't know. Have you ever been in an aeroplane? Not that I know of. Have you ever been in jail? <laughs> I hope not. Have you ever seen that before? No. Did you ever carry one of these? Never. Take it. Point it at me. Go on, point it at me. Now pull the trigger. You have to be careful of these things, Doc. You can't take chances. Have you ever shot a gun? No. Would you use a gun to kill? No, of course not. All right, my boy. That'll be all for now. All right, my dear. Hold a little. Well, my dear, you saw what happened? The only time it recorded anything abnormal was when I asked him to pull the trigger. And that was because he was afraid he might hurt me. I know, but that doesn't prove the cure is permanent. Perhaps you're right. And that's why I'm going to make a strange request of you. I'd like to have Raleigh live here with us for a while. 
Here? I know. I know it's asking a lot, dear. But this is a very serious problem. I started with a pathological criminal. Assuming that I've eliminated all his vicious traits. Now what have I? A blank mind. After all, Raleigh has to be stamped with an entirely new character. Now he's just an animated lump of clay. Your lump of clay may come to life in a way you don't expect. No, I doubt that, Margaret. His whole personality's been changed. I'm going to tell him that he was brought to me after an automobile accident. That I investigated and found that he had no relatives. That'll keep him from asking me too many questions. I know, but having him here in the house... Margaret, I have a responsibility toward that boy. I can't just turn him loose now. I know, but I still think it's a dangerous experiment. I can always turn him over to the police, and I will, the first time he shows any symptoms of reverting to type. All right, dear. <laughs> Margaret, you're grand. You're an awful sap running around with a guy like Cavelli. What's wrong with him? Well, nothing, maybe. But Slick wouldn't like it, and you'd know it. Gee whiz, gloves, I don't tell you what to do. Oh, if you ask me, he's just giving us a run around. He said he'd send for me as soon as he got settled. Fooey. Well, he's got to lay low till the heat dies down, maybe. The guy can't send for us now. He'd just be flagging the shams. It's just like I used to say in the ring. They can't hit you if you're laying down. Give him time. Another four months, I suppose. And in the meantime, crawlers and coffee in the steerage. You gotta be patient, Peg. Take like me now. I want to take a little trip back to the old country to see my mother. But I'm sticking around. Maybe Slick shows up one of these days and needs me. Then what? Hello, Louie. And Scram. Here comes the law. Russell. How is the food here, young lady? Too much copper. Oh, I don't know. A little copper might be a good thing for you. Not for me. I've got some news for you. Good news. Coming from you, it couldn't be good news. Oh, here, sit down. This will surprise you. You're going to see your boyfriend again. When I do, you won't know it. Well, have it your own way. We picked him up this morning. Huh? Um, why wasn't there anything in the papers about it? Oh, it will be. Now, if you're interested, I'll tell you the detail. All right, go ahead. Where'd you find him? Where nobody thought of looking for him? Living like a king on Park Avenue. On Park Avenue? Well, well. Mm-hmm. Playing a society swell, just like he was used to it. Say, a girl like you should have got wise to herself a long time ago. Best you can get from a guy like that's the worst of it. Yeah, maybe so. We got him, you. Hmm. Wish I did. I could use some of that reward. Say, look. Maybe I can get you a piece of that if you'll come downtown and talk. What about gloves? He'd fry me if I squealed. Don't worry about that guy. We got him locked up right in the next cell. Well, Sergeant... I'll tell you what we'll do. Yeah, what? You bring Slick over to my house and we'll make a deal. Yeah? I'm staying at the Ritz. Where's your checklist? That gentleman will pay for it. All right. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you are. Uh, thank you, sir. Where's your telephone? Right over here, sir. Thanks. Hello, Doctor. You looking for something? Can I help you? No, it's right here, so here it is. Let's see it. Yeah, that's pretty heavy reading. <laughs> You've been doing a lot of it lately, too. Yeah, I've been finding out about a lot of interesting things. You sure you're not overdoing it? I don't want you to overtax yourself. Ah, you? I feel fine. There's one thing that keeps bothering me, though, Doc. Yes? What's that? My past. You promised me you'd tell me all about it when I was well enough. As far as I've been able to discover, you have no relatives. That's why you're living here with us, recuperating. 
But I'm all right now. You've done enough for me. You've saved my life. You've been taking care of me. I can't go on like this, sponging on you forever. No, no, you're doing me a favor staying here. You see, your operation was one of the most unusual I ever performed. And it's really necessary that I observe all the after effects. You see, you're kind of valuable to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's different. Sure, I'll stay if I can be of any use. What can I do to help you? To help me, you've got to do whatever you like. Anything I like? Your future's in your own hands. What would you like to do? I don't know. If I could be like you, I'd kind of like to study medicine. <laughs> what makes you say that? The money you think I earn? No, not just that, but it seems like a swell sort of work for a man. Beside being useful, you're... it's interesting. Well, in that case, your education will have to be planned. You can't just go on reading at random. You mean I got to go to school? You're something like that. <laughs> All right, if you say so, but I'll seem sort of foolish sitting with a lot of kids. <laughs> well, that won't be necessary. I'll get you a tutor who'll work with you privately. And I know just the man, too, if he's at home. You had an operation today. I did, but I got through early. Can you have lunch with me? The luncheon's on me today. Take a look at this. Your appointment to medical staff, Belmore Island Prison, confirmed today by Governor H.C. Whitcomb. Well, congratulations, Jim. Thanks a lot for your letter of recommendation. It clinched the appointment for me. How are you going to handle your practice here? The prison work will only take my mornings. The rest of my time is my own. Tell me something, Jim. Why were you so eager to get this particular appointment to a prison when you might have had St. Victor's or Park Lane? Belmore's the only place I can get the cases I want. You know I've always been interested in criminal psychology. This is the best opportunity I can get near the city. They're difficult people to handle. Somehow I feel attracted to them. They need someone who understands their problems. Besides, I'm only following in your footsteps. You've always been interested in those cases. I always say you started me in my criminal career. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on, girls. Straighten up there. Quiet, quiet. Get into line. Quiet. Has anybody seen the new doctor? No, not yet. He's been busy in the hospital all week. Say, what's this new inoculation racket? Oh, something this doctor started. I ain't never been incalculated before. Oculated, dearie. Oculated. Not so much noise. Quiet down. Aggie, I think you get tired of coming in here. <laughs> you know very well you're no more sick than I am. Your temperature is absolutely normal. I'm a sick old woman, doctor. And the air in that laundry is fit to kill a billy goat. Is it the air or the work? What's your name, doctor? <laughs> All right, Aggie. Send it out to the hospital, Miss Cameron, for a few days. Normal diet. Oh, thank you, doctor. Thank you. Right. Oh, if only the judge had been like you. <laughs> the first group is ready for inoculation, doctor. Thanks. Send them in. All right, everybody. Roll up your left sleeves and start in one at a time. Gee, I wonder if this is going to hurt. Now everybody says the new doctor's chicken-hearted. He won't hurt you. The left one, not the right. Be careful now. We don't want to get that infected. Right over here, please. There's nothing to be afraid of. It'll all be over in a minute. There's nothing to it. Let me have your arm now. Come on, let me have your arm. Ouch! Oh, that 
didn't hurt you. Next. You'd better sterilize these, Miss Cameron. Bring me some more ampules. Come on, come on. What's the matter? You're not frightened, are you? No, but but your voice, I could have sworn it was somebody else. You seem a little nervous. How are you feeling? All right, I guess. Well, this won't hurt, I promise you. There, was that so bad? No, I guess not. You shouldn't be nervous. You seem a little underweight, too. Yeah, maybe I am. Suppose you come in tomorrow for an examination. Nope, I can't do that. My time's up. I'm checking out of this hotel in the morning. Oh, really? Yeah, that's fine. Better see some other doctor in town, then. Well, docs in town cost dough. You know, the state doesn't give you a pension when you get out of here. But I guess I can manage. You come into my office, Dr. James Blake. I'm in the telephone book. Well, gee, Doc, that's swell of you. I may take you up on that. Perfectly all right. Come in any time. OK, thanks. Oh, Russell, a visitor for you. Huh? A visitor for you. Hello, Pei. How you been? Okay, I guess, but I just had the shock of my life. I walks in to see the new croaker, and the minute he opens his yap, I almost faint. The guy's got a voice just like Slick. Gee, it give me the creeps. <laughs> That's your imagination. Six months in this joint's dimming your wits. Did you get my letter? Yeah. I bought you the new pair of shoes. The matron's got them. Took almost all the dough I had, too. Well, don't worry. I'm getting out of here tomorrow. We'll promote something together. I sure hope so. I can use the dough. Time's up. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. We'll be waiting for you. Hey, Gloves. What are you doing this side of the tracks? Oh, just taking the air. Well, riding's much more pleasant. Get in here. Thanks, Inspector. How long have you been out? A couple of weeks. Thought you were going to grab a boat and go to see your old mother or something. Yeah, I was. Only I could never get enough dough together. What's the matter? These new burglar alarms? Oh, now, Inspector, you got me wrong. I'm a model citizen these days. Well, that's just dandy. Have a cigar? Well, thanks. Cigarette? Never use them. Ever hear anything from any of our old friends? Yeah, Peg. She's up at Belmore Island. Ever hear from Slick Raleigh? Is Slick alive? I don't know. That's what I'm trying to find out. I don't know, Square Chief. I think he's cold. He must have got knocked off. I'd have heard from him, sure, if he was still alive. Well, maybe you're right. Maybe. Oh, hello, everybody. <laughs> Hello, Henry. Oh, Margaret. Why, you're looking more charming than ever. Thank oh, you, Henry. Sit down. Sit down, Henry. Well, what a surprise seeing you here. Thank you. Yes, I finally managed to drag him away from his work. Not only that, but I'm enjoying it. <laughs> it's army rot. If he had his way, he'd still be at the office, buried knee-deep in books and papers looking for new material. <laughs> By the way, I read your last article in the review. Found it very dull, I suppose. On the contrary, it's very sound, except that I don't think you go far enough. In what way, Judge? Well... In every article of yours that I've read, you do one of two things. You either quote from accepted authorities or you draw conclusions from prisoners already convicted. What's wrong with that? Well, that's rather like trying to study wild animal life in the zoo. <laughs> and what would you suggest? Well, come down to court and sit on the bench with me, say, tomorrow afternoon. I'll show you the prisoner before he's convicted. When he's still optimistic and defiant, you'll get enough material for half a dozen articles. Fine. Will you have luncheon with me first? Gladly. I'll meet you at uh, the Lafayette at 12.30. It's an engagement. Well, goodbye. I've got to run along. Goodbye, Judge. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are you represented by counsel? I don't want one. Why not? I don't need one. Just send me to jail. Read the charge. You are charged with the larceny of one gold bracelet valued at $175, taken from a counter of the Baron Jewelry Company. 
How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Clear it. Take her to my chambers. Court is adjourned for 15 minutes. There. Don't be frightened. This is Dr. Blake. Feel better? When was the last time you ate? Yesterday morning. I thought so. We've sent for some tea and toast for you. Tell me, where is your family? I haven't got any, but they're dead. Where do you live? I was locked out of my room the night before last. Where have you been sleeping? In subways. When did you work last? Three months ago. The firm I worked for went out of business. What was your position there? I was secretary to the vice president. First, I thought I wouldn't have any trouble getting a new job, but I, I haven't even been able to get work as a dishwasher. Miss Hayden, are you guilty of the charge? I suppose so. You surely didn't think you could get away with that bracelet? I didn't expect to get away with it. I wanted to get arrested. Why? When you haven't even got a nickel for a bed in the subway, you haven't eaten for two days. A prison isn't the worst place in the world. Some toast. Excuse us. This girl's no criminal. Release her in my charge. I'll see that she gets a job. That's quite a responsibility, Doctor. She's had a tough time. She deserves a break. Very well, then. Miss Hayden, Dr. Blake assures me that he can get you a position, so I'm going to release you in his care. Well, I, I don't know how to thank you. Oh, oh, that's all right. We both agree that you ought to have a chance. Well, now, Judge, if there's nothing more you want of us, suppose Miss Hayden and I run along. By all means, I'll see you to the elevator. I hope you haven't altogether wasted your time this afternoon. Far from it. But from what I've seen, I haven't changed any of my theories. People often do wrong things from right motives. Yes, and very often do right things from wrong motives. Yes. What is it, Inspector? Did you want to see Dr. Blake for anything? Well, I beg your pardon, Judge, and you too, Doctor. I thought you were someone I was after. I'm sorry to disappoint you. Excuse me, please. Who's he? Oh, Inspector Logan, the homicide squad. Well, goodbye, Judge. Goodbye. Thank Good you. luck, young lady. Thank you. I want to see Dr. Blake, please. Have you an appointment? No, but he told me to come in. My name's Russell. Peggy Russell. Just a moment, please. There's a Miss Peggy Russell to see you, Doctor. Yes, Doctor. Will you please step inside, Miss Russell? Hello, Dr. Blake. Hello there. You're looking a lot better than when I saw you last. Well, there's not much style of those clothes they give you on the island. Sit down. Thanks. How have you been feeling? Oh, I don't know. That that arm that you inoculated has been bothering me a little. That's why I came to see you. Let's take a look at it. Gee, Doc, it's swell of you to let me come up here. That's what I'm here for. Perfectly healed. Well, it had been hurting a little. Got nothing to worry about here. What are you smiling about? Oh, I can't get it out of my head. How much your voice reminds me of somebody I used to know. Really? You know, that's why I was so nervous that first day that I saw you on the island. But I guess the law got that guy a long time ago. <laughs> I'm afraid, young lady, you've known too many guys like that. There was only one like him. How have you been getting along? Oh, not so good. I've been trying to find a job. But you sure need a bloodhound to find one. If I wasn't trying to go straight, it'd be different. And a girl's in a tough spot when she's broke. Yes, I guess it is. The main thing is to keep up your courage. You don't want to slip back into the old life. Look, why don't you let me help you out? Oh, no, Doc. Now, now I can't let you do that. 
That isn't what I came up here for. It's very easy for me to sit here and give you free advice, but that doesn't pay the room rent, does it? Yeah, this will help until you find something to do. I sure hate to take this, Doc. You know, you've been swell to me, and I don't like to sponge on you. I'll just take it as a loan. Never mind about that. You don't know what it means to a girl in my spot to have someone take a little interest in you. We all need help at times. You're swell. Uh, keep in touch with me. Let me know how you're getting along. I will. And the next thing I know, he hands over a fistful. Yeah? He listens to me like a pretty swell guy. He is. What do you want to take him for, then? Because he's a soft touch, stupid. He showed me a wad that looked like an overstuffed divan. No, I don't know. I don't like to take guys. Ah, don't be a mope. You're broke, ain't you? You want to see your old lady, don't you? Yeah. Well, then pull this one and you don't ride with the peasants. You travel deluxe. Guys like that were meant for smart people to take. Are you sure you know the layout? Every step of the way. Now, listen. Late tomorrow afternoon, you go down to the professional bill. The explanation for these sympathetic reflexes is vague. Langley has shown that they are not reflexes in the... In the... Oh, that's enough for tonight. It's almost six. I don't mind staying if you want to finish. We'll finish in the morning. You've been working late too many evenings. I find it so interesting, I forget to look at the clock. That's just what I've been thinking. I know I'm your boss, but I'm also a doctor, and I'm supposed to look out for your health. Have you been noticing any trouble with your eyes lately? Do they ache? Why, no. Let me look at them. Close them, please. You feel your pulse. Keep your eyes closed. That's my prescription to keep you from overworking. It's lovely. I, I don't know quite what to say. It certainly is nice medicine. I'm glad you like it, Janet. <laughs> Here, let me help you. Here. Um, there. Now you know it's time to quit. Go on home, do your typing in the morning. Good night. Good night, and thank you. this? What does it look like? Get over here and shell out. You're welcome to anything I've got, but you won't find much here. You do talk like slick at that. What? Never mind. You just behave yourself and nothing's going to happen to you. You are slick. Well, slick! It's me, Gloves! Gloves Baker! I sure ain't forgot that one, too, I showed you, kid. Feels like old times. What are you talking about? No, I don't give me that stuff. You don't have to kid me. That voice and the old gagaroo with the keys. I got you pegged, Slick. I got you. Who's your Slick you're talking about? All right. Slick, Jim, James. What's the difference? What's this? After prison, what? 
James Blake, MD. Did you write this? Yes. Hey, that's great. Where'd you learn so much about prisons? I've specialized in them. And from what I've observed, that's where you belong. Hey, you ain't gonna turn me in, are you? I don't know. Are you wanted for anything? Well, if you mean am I hot, no. Hey, you don't mind, do you? My head still hurts. Thanks. I don't understand you fellas. You'll never learn, will you? None of you ever get anywhere in this racket. You're always caught in the end. Did you ever try working for a living? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Is a little work beneath your dignity? No, that ain't it. It's just the idea of you telling me to go to work. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Oh, nothing. Never mind. You don't just go to work, you know. You have to find a job first. If you're lucky and you got good references, you might get a break. But the kind of papers I got, pal, ain't so hot. Most people are just like you. They turn a guy in instead of giving them a chance. You probably wouldn't take a job if it was offered to you. Well, would you give me a chance? I might take a chance. What can you do? <laughs> yeah, you got me, pal. Can you drive a car? Oh, sure, that's right. I drove a taxi once before they put in them trick meters. Well, do you want the job driving for me? Hey, you on the level? You ain't kidding, are you? I might risk it. You certainly kept me waiting long enough. Well, what are you made up for? How do you like the outfit? Never mind the outfit. What did you get? A punch in the jaw and a job. Huh? Meet Dr. Blake's new chauffeur. Ah, quit kidding. Was the setup wrong? Honey, there ain't gonna be no setup. Nobody's gonna take the dark for nothing. You understand that? What's the matter with you? Have you gone crazy? Maybe. It's all the way you look at it. Well, I don't get it at all. You go out to stick a guy up, you come back, you're a chauffeur. It don't make sense. Maybe not to you, Toots. But you don't count. The doc's the right guy, and from now on, no jip gets to him. Meaning me? Meaning anybody that tries to clip him. So you better get wise to yourself. What did you do? Swap your heart for a dish of chicken salad? Chicken salad ain't bad, kid. Well, I got an errand to do for my boss. See you later. And listen, sister. It's like I always used to say in the ring. If you don't lead, you don't get hurt. Uh, here we are. Homer's antiseptic toxemia. I think that's what Dr. Blake wants. Antiseptic. Yeah, that's it, Doc. Thanks. Uh, just a minute. Haven't I seen you somewhere? Oh, I don't think so, Doctor. But your face seems familiar. Oh, maybe you seen me when I was working in the ring. I was pretty good for a while. I fought two fights in the old garden. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't think that was it. Uh, what did you do after you uh, retired? A lot of time, Doc. Up the river, I mean. All but slick, no. What's that? I mean, I told Doc Blake all about it. He, he knows. I told him. Who did you say? Nothing. Nobody. You said slick. Do you mean slick, Raleigh? So you know, too. I don't know nothing. You can be frank with me. I've known it for years. Have you told him anything? He don't even know I know. It must remain our secret. We've got to be very, very careful. He remembers nothing about his past life. Look, Doc. I love that guy. I'd do anything for him. Anything. I believe you would. Good morning, Miss Hayden. Good morning. Oh, doctor, I managed to get you out of that luncheon at the women's club. Swell. You're to speak at the county medical board instead. That's sort of out of the frying pan, isn't it? <laughs> Do 
did you want me, Doctor? Was there something particular in this article you wanted me to read? I didn't know whether you had read Jonas's criticism of the concert. What made you think I'd be interested? I saw you there. I didn't see you. You couldn't see up that high. <laughs> How'd you like the concert? Oh, marvelous. I could listen to Beethoven's music forever. Oh, a real music lover. You must like pastrami sandwiches then on Russian rye. Well, I, I don't know. I never tried that. Why, no concert's complete without pastrami sandwiches on Russian rye. I'll prove it to you next week. Heifetz is playing. We'll go to Gobelhoff's afterward. You've never heard music till you've eaten there. <laughs> <laughs> Russell. Hello, Dr. Blake. Thought I'd drop in and see you again. Fine. How are you getting along? Well, in a way, that's what I came to see you about. You see, it's like this. I, um, I've been living in a rooming house downtown, and the landlady's got my truck with all my clothes in it. She's holding it because I owe her a month's rent. How much do you owe her? The rent? Oh, that's only about $40, but, uh, I got a girlfriend out in Chicago, and I had a letter from her the other day, and... She said she could get a job for me where she works if I could get out there. So you want me to pay your fare, is that it? How much is it? Well, how much is it? Oh, um... Oh, about five grand. $5,000? Are you out of your mind? That ain't a lot of money. Not to Slick Raleigh, it ain't. Who's this Slick Raleigh you keep talking about? What's he got to do with me? No wonder that voice of yours hit me. Say, listen, Dr. Blake, or whatever you call yourself, you don't have to put on any act with me. The whole thing's as clear as day. Now I know why you hired gloves. But you can't buy me off like that. It's five grand or else. Or else what? Or else I'll smear your name all over the front pages of every newspaper in the country. Why should that worry me? I've been in the newspapers before. That's nothing like the rap you're going to take this time. I think you better leave, Miss Russell. You've obviously got me mixed up with somebody else. And you're trying to blackmail me. You seem to forget that you were nothing but a small-time chiseler and you hooked up with me. Get out. Listen, don't give me any of that. Either you pay me or this swell doctor record of yours is all washed up and they'll be parking you in a different chair. Get out of here and don't come back. Listen, you won't be here to come back, too. gloves right away. He's at the garage. Is anything wrong, Jim? No, just get gloves. What's the boss want? I don't know, but he's very upset about something. He is? You want me, Doc? Gloves who? Slick Raleigh. Slick? 
Why? He's just a guy I used to know. Why? Do you know Peggy Russell? Russell? No, I never heard of her. She seems to know you. Oh, lots of people know me that I don't know. Why? What about her? She was just in here. She mentioned you and Raleigh. Oh, that's nothing. Everybody knows Slick and I used to work together. When? Oh, a couple, three years ago. Then why should she call me Slick Raleigh? Oh, that name's Daffy. Slick's dead. He got knocked off. Are you sure of that? Absolutely. All right, that's all, Bob. Tell me something, Gloves. Were we so much alike, this Slick Raleigh and I? You? <laughs> oh, a little on the surface, maybe. <laughs> you ain't nothing like Slick, though, boss. Never mind this, Torlan. What was you doing up at the doc's office this afternoon? I don't get you. You know what I'm talking about. I told you a long time ago to lay off my boss, and that still goes. Well, I was just making him a little friendly visit. Then what did you call him Slick for? Well, he is, ain't he? Listen, I'm going to tip you off to something. Slick's dead. He got his out west. You understand that? Okay by me. Well, then don't forget it, because I'm not going to tell all you All right, that. all right. If you say he's dead, he's dead. You don't have to get tough about it. I might have to. It's okay with me either way. You don't think I'd turn him in, do you? It wouldn't be a good idea, even if he was alive, which he ain't. Well, then what are you beefing about? You know me, Glovesy. Yeah. That's what I'm worrying about. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. Sit down. Thanks. I've seen you for a long time. Does the reward still go for Slick Rowley? Well, I'll say it does. What's it worth? Ten grand? Where is he? Around. When do I get it? On conviction. Nothing doing. I want it when you pick him up. Oh, come on, Peggy. We can play ball. The dough has to be in the bag before I talk. Well, I'll... I'll get you half on the rest and the balance on conviction. I want it all. All right, I'll get it for you. Now, where is he? Do you think you better put that in writing? If I say you get it, you get it. Well, all right, then. He's right where you once told me he'd be. On Park Avenue. What does he call himself? Oh, this'll kill you. He calls himself Dr. James Blake. Goodbye. You've just lost ten grand. Well, but I know it's like I saw him just a little while ago. And I tell you it isn't. I met Dr. Blake and made the same mistake you did. Forget it. I tell you, it is Slick. He must have had his face lifted. He's got gloves working for him. He's got the same voice. He's even got an old habit of Slick's. Every time he gets thinking about something, he twirls his keychain. And you want me to arrest an eminent physician because he swings his keys? Well, I do the same thing myself sometimes. Well, but it's Slick, I tell you. You've got to arrest him. Oh, you're wasting my time. All right, wise guy. But you're making an awful sap of yourself. Dr. James Blake on the phone. All right. Why, yes, Inspector. I'm familiar with that type of case. I've studied many of them. Sure, I'll be glad to help. Five o'clock will be quite convenient. I'll be there. That's all, Inspector. Come on. Well, what do you think of him? Genuine case, all right. He's not faking. Yes, I think you're right. I'll have him committed to an asylum. Well, thank you, Doctor, for coming over. I appreciate very much you giving me your time. Not at all. I'm glad to be able to help. Call on me at any time. Thank you. I will. Scully? Yes? Come in. There they are. Uh, 
This is Blake's and this is Raleigh's. No chance for a mistake. Why, they're identical. Look at this island here. Now, the ridge leads from here and splits and comes around here and comes together again to form this island here and here. No, Inspector. No chance for a miss. You've got your man. Uh, it's taking a long time. And you'll never know how close he was to getting away from me. Well, you better go grab him. No, he'll be around. Yes, sir. Mike, call up the 27th precinct and have him pick up Gloves Baker. Yes, sir. How long have you been working for Dr. Blake? Well, I've been driving for him about a couple months now, I guess. Mm-hmm. How'd you come to get the job? Well, he just asked me could I drive a car, and I said yes, and he gave me the job. Oh, just like that, eh? How'd you happen to meet him in the first place? Peg met him on the island. He was a doc over there. She kept telling me what nice guy he was, and he was doing nice things for people. So I went up to his office one day. Well, he just gave me the job, that's all. Well, is he a nice guy to work for? Yeah, he's all right. Did you ever notice anything funny about him? His voice, for instance. His voice? No, nothing special. Did you ever strike him? It sounded like someone you knew. No. Uh -uh. Well, I guess that's all, gloves. I just wanted to check up on you and be sure that you were behaving yourself. Oh, you don't have to worry about me, Inspector. <laughs> this law and order stuff is swell for me. <laughs> Margaret, I'll sit in front with gloves, if you don't mind. That's quite all right, dear. So glad you're back, sir. I got back as quickly as I could. A couple of days after that, this guy Logan has me picked up. I'm dragged down to headquarters and put on the carpet. He asked me a lot of questions about Dr. Blake. Of course, he didn't say anything about Slick, but I knew what he was driving at. You didn't say anything? No, I played dumb. As soon as I could get away from him, I went to that cable office. I'm glad you did. I'm afraid this is very serious, Gloves. And that ain't all. The doc himself's been fishing around for the last couple of weeks, asking me what I knew about Slick and the dame. I try to laugh it off, but the guy's just not himself, that's all. He's got a hunch or something. There's a lot more to this than you've told me, Doctor. You're protecting me from something. My dear boy, you're just imagining... I've checked. There's no record of a James Blake having been in an automobile accident at the time of my operation. But at about that time, Slick Raleigh disappeared. <laughs> That's a mere coincidence. Not when so many people mistake me for Raleigh. First that detective down at the court, then Gloves, and finally the Russell woman. It can't be an accident when it happens so often. You've got to tell me the truth about myself. My dear boy, I've already told you you are James Blake. How long have I been James Blake? As long as I've known That's you. That's only ten years or so. Who was I before that? To the best of my knowledge, you have always been Blake. This uncertainty is driving me out of my mind. I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't work. I keep straining my mind, trying to remember back. Oh, doctor, I'm grateful to you for all you've done for me. You've been like a father to me. But I have a right to know who I really am. I must know. Who am I? I never wanted to tell you this, Jim. I wanted to spare you if I could. But evidently, it's no longer my secret. And I'm... Sit down, Jim. I may as well tell you the whole story. About ten years ago, I was lecturing up at the medical school. Yes, sir. Call my car, will you please? Yes, sir. Will it be gone long? No, not long. Frank? I'm going out and pick up a man that I've been after for 10 years. Good luck, Chief. And you know the rest. Naturally, when I got Gloves Cable, I hurried back because I realized what had happened.
What are you going to do, Jim? What can I do? If I'm Raleigh, I've got to pay Raleigh's debt. You'd better think twice before doing anything like that. It's perfectly clear there's only one course to take. I'm not so sure of that, Jim. Yes? I'm ready, Inspector. I waited a long time by this moment. Look forward to it as the greatest day of my life. Now it's come, it doesn't give me the pleasure I thought it would. scientific society in the country is protesting. The district attorney's office is flooded with telegrams. Doesn't it mean anything to you that Judge Treacher has resigned from the bench just so he can defend you? Don't you see? Everybody wants you to go free. But we can't do it without you. You've got to help us make a fight of it. Slick Raleigh. Slick Raleigh. No matter what happens, no matter how it turns out, I'm still Slick Raleigh. The killer. Oh, darling, I don't care who you are, what you've done. I'll always love you. For my sake, you mustn't give up. in particular. Hop in. We'll take a little drive. All right. Say, Peg, did you get one of them subpoenas? Uh-huh. What about it? I got one of them, too. I can't figure out why. What's your slant on it? Oh, nothing. They just catch up with the mug, that's all. Ah, oh, that ain't no way to talk about Dr. Blake. Doctor, my eye. He's slick, and everybody knows it now. All right, so he is slick. So what? So he burns. Not if you and me don't talk. But we do. Ah, you ain't gonna do nothing like that. You can't. That's where you're wrong. I'm gonna do it. What's the big idea? You used to be crazy about it. Yeah, I used to be. But that was a long time ago. Now, listen. You was always a good businesswoman. Hard to make a few bucks. Well? Supposing I got you a little dough to take a run out and not show up at the trial. How much dough? Well, say, a couple of C-notes. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. A couple of hundred bucks? Get out of the bargain basement, brother. Well, I might rake up, say, 500 or even a grand, maybe. Quick plan and make me a real offer. I don't know where I can get any more dough, Peg. You don't, but I do. You mean the reward for turning them in? So that's how they made the nab, huh? That's just about the way I figured it. You no good little... Jury, 
You've heard the state's case so ably and fairly presented by my distinguished colleague, the district attorney. First, he contended that Slick Raleigh killed uh, Officer Williams in the course of a bank robbery, thus making the offense first-degree murder. He then offered proof that Slick Raleigh has become Dr. James Blake, thus making Dr. Blake responsible for the crime. This is the legal aspect of the state's case. And he finally concluded by demanding that Dr. Blake must suffer the extreme penalty for the crimes committed by Slick Raleigh. You have perhaps wondered why I have not denied any of the state's contentions or indeed offered any defense. But do not believe that it is because of any feeling of helplessness on my part, far from it. Because I think, and Dr. Blake agrees, that there is no reason to deny these charges because, gentlemen of the jury, all of the state's charges are true. We have never denied that Dr. Blake was once the notorious criminal Slick Raleigh. We do not deny it now. But remember, I do not say he is Slick Raleigh, but that he at one time was. You've heard the testimony of Dr. Schuyler, his admission that he harbored a criminal. He did this in the interest of science, knowing full well that he was exposing himself to possibly 20 years in the penitentiary. And you have heard him willingly admit his readiness to stand trial for his act. Perhaps you now ask yourselves a question. Why didn't Dr. Schuyler turn this man over to the police once the operation had been successfully performed? I can only tell you that he was restrained by one of the profoundest of human emotions. He had learned to love this man like his own son. You have seen the result of this marvelous surgical operation. This metamorphosis, this changing of a pathological criminal into so eminent a man of science that the whole medical world honors him as one of its most brilliant members, a man who is daily rendering great and valuable service to society, the same society that Slick Raleigh once defied. Therefore, I ask you to stop and consider whom are you trying? Dr. James Blake or Slick Raleigh? We claim that Slick Raleigh is dead. He died on Dr. Schuyler's operating table 10 years ago. And from that same operating table, there arose a new man, Dr. James Blake, the scientist. Gentlemen of the jury, we contend that the world needs the power and skill of Dr. Blake infinitely more than it needs a victim to atone for Slick Raleigh's misdeeds. Therefore, gentlemen of the jury, a solemn duty rests upon you. A momentous decision is in your hands. Shall Dr. James Blake pay for the crimes of Slick Raleigh? How are you going to answer that question? Now that you are a free man, what are your plans? Believe it or not, I'm going to give up my freedom. I'm getting married. Poor man. And when do you expect to take this fatal step? Tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock, at the home of Dr. and Mrs. Clifford Schuyler. Just one more question, Dr. Blake, and I want you to think carefully before answering. Do you or do you not love a young lady named Janet Hayden? Who, me? Most certainly not. 
What does the lie detector say? Darling, it says you're telling the most tremendous lie. <laughs> <laughs>